All right, so I want to just talk here for a minute about why the push forward of u1 is xu and why the push forward of u2 is xv. Now, there's a lot of potential for confusion here because I'm I'm using u1 and u2 as the Cartesian frame on R2. Here we are assuming that x is a patch, um, again, from some open set of R2 to the surface in R3, right? So, um, because I want to talk about the Cartesian frame both in R2 and R3, I probably should use a different name for the frame in R3. Let's, let's say that the frame in R3 um, is what? Well, let's say it's uh, u bar 1, u bar 2, u bar 3, right? So, one way you can understand why, why these uh, formulas are true, if I look at the push forward under x of u1, all right, so that would be, what would that be? Well, x, remember, is x, y, z. So the definition of push forward was dx um, acting on the vector u1, and then in the u1 direction, but I'll put a bar because that's the u1 in R3, plus dy um, acting on u1, put a u bar 2 because we're, you know, it's, a ta it's going to R3, okay. Um, well, I guess technically it's going to some, uh, oops, 1. Uh, u bar 3. But um, what is this? Well, u1, remember, really, I mean, another way to think about u1 is that, uh, and uh, maybe maybe this is a good example of why it's maybe better to use the uh, this notation, the partial notation, as opposed to the <laughs> the, uh, the other notation, because it's, it's more manifest what's going on. Um, so the u and v coordinates being the parameter space coordinates. So when I have dx um, u1, what that what that is is is, is u1 acting on x, right? Um, u1 acting on y. Uh, u1 acting on z. Differentiating z, right? Because the the u1 is a differential operator. It's a derivation. So, but what is that? Well, that's partial x, partial u u bar 1 plus partial um, y partial u, u bar 2 plus partial z partial u, u bar 3. Well, that's exactly the velocity vector to the u coordinate curve, I believe, um, of the patch. Uh, in other words, that is precisely x sub u. All right. And then likewise, Almost the same calculation shows you that the push forward of u2 is equal to xv. But maybe it's even more instructive to look at this as the push forward of partial partial u is xu. And the push forward of partial partial v is xv. All right. If you... If you <laughs> If you choose the right notation, it almost looks like we're saying nothing, um, and sometimes that's true. But um, another uh, important factoid for you, also in the same family of, of reasoning, if we calculate xu acting on a function uh, at various points in time, we'll need to use that that's partial partial u of f um, composed with x. All right, so why is that true? Well, xu acting on f, right? What is that? Well, as we just wrote up here, that's partial x, partial u, u bar 1. But what is u bar 1? Well, u bar 1 is partial, it's partial f, partial x, right? Now, um, and then we've got partial y, partial u, partial f, partial y partial z, partial u, partial f, partial z, but what is that? Well, that's that's nothing more than partial, partial u of composite. Um, 
well, let's see here. So, yeah. I mean, there's some more details to flesh out there in terms of arguments, but that's the, the essential point here. All right, I will edit that in. <laughs>